Hello, Eagles. I'm Andrew Harker. And I'm Tucker Latinen. And welcome back to episode five of the Avion. Isn't it crazy that we're already on episode five? I feel like we just started like last week. I know. Here we are. This semester is flying by and I can't believe we're almost at spring break. Anyways, last week we heard from Elisa who gave us the ins and outs of the astronomy department from the College of Arts and Science. But this week, we're going to take it back to Abby to give us some more context about some strange things flying or floating in the sky. Thanks, Drew. Many of you have been looking up at the sky and have been wondering whether or not there's another one. Another one of what, you may say? Yup, the mysterious objects, with the most famous one being the Chinese spy balloon. Concern was sparked on February 4th when a Chinese spy balloon was shot down by an F-22 Raptor fighter jet just off the coast of South Carolina. As the U.S. tried to recover the balloon, more and more objects began to float into U.S. airspace. According to CBSNews.com, on the 16th, President Biden spoke about these mysterious objects. He stated that the incidents after the one on the 4th were most likely, be, most likely balloons tied to private companies, recreation or research institutions, studying weather or conducting other scientific research. It will be interesting to see if more objects will be floating in the U.S. airspace and how they will be handled. If you see something up in the sky, you never know. Or it's just the Goodyear blimp. Thanks. Back to you. Thank you, Abby. I, I'm happy that we didn't have those flying over Daytona. Mm -hmm. I could not deal with that. I know it's definitely been some interesting times and especially thankful that we didn't have to deal with those over uh, the race last week and everything going on with the Thunderbirds. But anyways, last week the weather was absolutely beautiful, but this week I don't know what to expect. So I'm gonna, we're going to transition it over to Danielle to see what she has to say. We're finally going to start seeing those 80 degree temperatures we've all been hoping for. It is time to hit the beach. An average low 80 temperature today with some clouds in the sky, dew point 62. We got some winds coming from the southwest, 15 miles per hour, so just a little strong. When we have our winds coming from the south, that's what's causing our temperatures to warm up, hence why we're having some warm temperatures this upcoming week. When it comes to our almanac, normal high 73, normal low 52. That record low 28, don't you worry, it is not going to be happening anytime soon. I hate the cold. You live in Florida, I bet you do too. Uh, record high, though, this is the story here, 87 degrees. We might be breaking that record this week since we are seeing some mid to high 80 degree temperatures all because of those south southwesterly winds affecting us. Let's find out. However, this weekend we do have a cold front on the way, but don't you worry, it's not going to be really decreasing our temperatures that much, mostly bringing in some rain, some moisture, and lots and lots of cloud cover as that cold front pushes along. For our average temperatures this week, mostly going to fluctuate to the mid-70s, high 70s, low 80s. But here's the story here. On Thursday, it's starting to rise up. Daytona Beach, 85. DeLand, 87. And Orlando, 90 degrees. And it's going to fluctuate once again. But once it reaches Friday, things are just going to get a little bit tad warmer. Daytona Beach, 86. DeLand, 89. And Orlando, once again, 90 degrees. So if you are hitting those theme parks, make sure to pack the sunblock. It's going to be hot, 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 hot. When it comes to the seven-day forecast, pretty interesting weather. Monday, Tuesday, 86, some clouds in the sky. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, things are starting to warm up with plenty of sunshine. This is the time to hit the beach. But that cold front is arriving late Friday night, early Saturday morning. So it's going to start to decrease those temperatures just a tad. Saturday, 76, Sunday, 69, some clouds and some wind. So Drew and Tucker, hit the beach if you can because this is the time to do it. Beautiful beach day, hot temperatures all around. Enjoy it. You know, I was thinking about how Danielle is a weather wizard, but truly she's an oracle. She looks into the future. Speaking of future, tell us a little bit more about ACB. I heard you're going on something about that. Yeah, so actually we're going to San Francisco for the ACP this year and oh, we're bringing nice. five other people. That's awesome. I went last year and for those who don't know, ACP is a conference where a bunch of journalism uh, programs and media divisions um, from all over the United States come together and talk a little bit and bounce off ideas about how to make their program and their platforms better for students. Um, it's definitely a lot of fun. You go to a bunch of breakout sessions, ranging from photography to writing, journalism, and everything under the sun. So I can't wait to hear what you take notes on and bring back to us. Next, we're going to move over to Aki with our SGA Outlook and give you some really important dates that you want to keep on your mind. Aki. Do you have some spare time on your hands and no idea what you can do to occupy that time? Maybe you're tired of throwing yourself into schoolwork all day, every day, and just need a change of pace. Lucky for you, the SGA divisions have you covered. The Avion, ERT, and Touch and Go have a week full of interesting events that you can take part in. If you need some new re reading material that isn't a textbook, 
Pick up a copy of the Avion Student Life Special Issue from their tabling spots in the Student Union or a newsstand located around campus. Want to expand upon your first aid knowledge? ERT is hosting a Stop the Bleed class on March 2nd at 7 p.m. in the College of Business, room 115. Of course, if you're looking for a fun kickoff to the weekend, Touch and Go has you covered with a murder mystery event happening this Friday from 5 to 8 p.m. in the Student Union Events Center. The divisions are always up to something exciting, so why not take a break from the books and go have some fun? Thank you, Aki, and I know I need to add those dates into my calendar. Over the past few weeks, we have heard from three out of the four SGA divisions who are here to serve you. Finally, in this series, we're bringing it home and hearing more about the Avion. You might recognize him around campus, especially at Skyline Socials, in the residence halls as an RA, the flight line as a pilot, and hanging out with everyone's favorite Eagle, Ernie, and also the Avion's editor-in-chief. Welcome, Dylan. Thank you, Drew, for having me. Thank you for coming on. Um, so tell me a little bit more about what the Avion is and everything about that. Yeah, so the Avion is the news and media division of the Student Government Association. Mm -hmm. We were founded in, in 1969 as a newspaper, but right now we're a magazine. Mm -hmm. So we provide and we produce those issues every two weeks. And something else that we also do is now this weekly broadcast series. Oh, that's awesome. So tell me a little bit more about the services that not every student's like going to know about. I know like the issues, the broadcast, the photo booths, stuff like that is more like in the student union, it's more invisible. But what about the things that like no one really knows about, like can get can know about? Of course, yeah. So we do provide a lot of behind the scenes support, especially for RSO student right. organizations. Now, one of the biggest things around this time of year um, is headshots. Mm. So we do have headshots that you know your organization can book, so we can come to your meeting and essentially do those both inside or outside. Um, especially as we approach the, that career fair that's mm. happening after spring break. Um, something else that we also provide for students is access to Adobe Creative mm. Cloud. So if you do need that service and those software, um, that software for you know editing photos or videos or just any sort of media, um, come see us. Awesome. And then how if students are watching this and they're like, hey, I, that looks really cool. How can they get involved? What are some of the steps for that? I'd say the the first way to kind of get in in the loop of things is to join our Discord server. Um, the QR code to join that is at, uh, on the back of every mm. one of our issues. So look at the back cover, scan that QR code, and check see what's going on. Um, I'd say the step after that is just come to one of our general meetings. They happen at 7 p.m. on every Tuesday in SU210, the chamber, mm -hmm. in the Student Union. And another important meeting time for us is 1 p.m. on Sundays. So if you can't make that Tuesday night, just come to the that Sunday um, meeting time. It's called production when we kind of all come together and work on the magazine, the broadcast, photos, literally everything else that's going on. That's awesome. And before you head out, I know you have a very busy schedule, but what is one piece of advice that you'd like to give out? Yeah, so I'd say especially as a, when it comes to the spring semester, um, it's a lot different than fall where mm -hmm. we don't have you know as many breaks, as many times to kind of stop and, and recharge and mm -hmm. reflect. Take some time for yourself. Kind of factor in you know maybe Friday evenings, go to Silent Social, hang out with friends. Um, really get that time just for yourself mm -hmm. so that you're kind of you know decompressing from from the week. I know spring gets really busy, mm -hmm. so it's important to. So take some time for yourself. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dylan. And we can't wait to hear more and see more about what the Avion is doing this semester. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Now that football and racing season have concluded, what do I watch? Thankfully, thankfully we have Owen to help us with what to watch. Owen? Hey, y'all. My name's Owen, and I'm the executive senior chief sports reporter here. Got some exciting events coming up that we need to talk about. Rita Athletics and the beginnings of March Madness are going to make this month a busy one, so let's get into it. On this upcoming Wednesday, we actually have both our men and women's tennis teams competing right here in town. At 3.30 on Wednesday, March 1st, both teams are hitting it off against the Tigers of Salem University. These matches will be right here on campus, so be sure to come support our Eagles. The grind doesn't stop with our men and women's track and field teams either. Both are heading over to Tampa on Friday to give it their all, so be sure to check out the live stream available at erauathletics.com. And I know this may be a little early, but are you all basketball fans getting ready for this spring's March Madness? I can't wait to update y'all in just a few weeks, so stay tuned. Back to y'all. Our school sports are slept on. Those people juggle schooling, sports, hobbies, and relationships. Yeah, they do, and it's all, they always put up a good fight, especially whoever they're playing, or, and it's always entertaining. Yes, it is. Basically, what we're saying is if you haven't gone out to a game yet or just reluctant to go, 
It's great fun and good if you want to take a break. And especially the taking the break part. And you always want to make sure you take a break from your schoolwork and spend some time with friends who, and everyone else on campus. And it's also watching the Avion every week. <laughs> yeah, that's a way. Anyways, my name is Tucker Lettman. And I'm Andrew Harker. And thank you for joining us for another episode.